Today, we will review our current inpatient transfusion thresholds. Now, one important caveat to remember is that in an inpatient setting, we have the luxury of closely monitoring our patients, their symptoms, and their labs. Clinical practice in the outpatient setting may vary, and that's because we have to consider other factors, including accessibility and follow-up. So the objective of today is to specifically review the current transfusion guidelines and thresholds for just in-hospital management. When we think about blood transfusions for patients with low hemoglobin, there's a couple considerations. We use a threshold of 70 for general inpatients. We use a threshold of 80, however, for patients with specifically active coronary artery disease. But there isn't a specific threshold we use for patients who are actively bleeding, because this depends on the reason they're bleeding, their rate of bleeding, and their underlying comorbidities. Generally, we use a higher target somewhere along the lines of 80 to 100. Platelet transfusions are a little more complicated. As a general rule, we typically give platelets to patients who have a count of less than 5 or 10 whether or not they're bleeding. The important caveat to remember is that this does not apply for patients who have an underlying consumptive process. The reason is that they will simply destroy any platelet products that are transfused. A good example of this is ITP. We may certainly consider platelet transfusion in a bleeding ITP patient, but regardless of the platelet count, in a non-bleeding ITP patient, we generally would not transfuse platelets. For thrombocytopenic patients who are actively bleeding, we usually consider platelet transfusions anywhere from a platelet count of 30 to 50, but that number can vary. We typically use a platelet threshold of 50 for any non-invasive or even invasive procedures. We use a threshold of 80 for neuroaxial interventions such as spinal anesthetics. And finally, we use a platelet count of 100 for specifically neurosurgeries. Now let's consider the white blood cells. Is there anything we can do for leukopenia? Sometimes there's discussion of GCSF, or neupogen, which is a neutrophil stimulating factor. It's actually important to recognize that GCSF should not be given empirically for a low white cell count or a low neutrophil count. The use of GCSF may decrease the length of stay in hospital, but doesn't change morbidity or mortality. And in fact, it could mask the underlying etiology of the problem. And thus, we usually discourage the use unless we've consulted hematology. Remember that these thresholds are simply guidelines, and they aren't a replacement for your clinical judgment.